In this video I'll explain how to C-bind and R-bind vectors with different length using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. So in this video I will show you two examples and both of these examples are based on the vector objects that we can create with lines 2 to 8 of the code. So in lines 2 to 4 of the code I'm creating the first vector object. So if you run these lines of code you can see that a new vector object appears at the top right which is called vec1. And we can see the structure of this vector at the bottom in the RStudio console and as you can see our vector has names ranging from a to f and values ranging from 1 to 6. Our second vector can be created with lines 6 to 8 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see that another vector object is appearing at the top right which is called vec2 and you can see the structure of this second vector at the bottom in the RStudio console and as you can see this vector object contains only four vector elements which are ranging from a to d and 1 to 4. So if you want to c-bind these two vector objects with different length then we can apply the functions of the qpcr package and if we want to use the functions of the qpcr package we first need to install and load the qpcr package as you can see in lines 10 and 11. I have installed the package already so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 11 of the code and after running this line of code we are able to use the cbind.na function as you can see in line 13 of the code and in front of this function we need to specify the name of the qpcr package and three double points. And then within the function we need to specify the names of our two vector objects vec1 and vec2. And we are storing the output of this entire function in a new data object which is called data cbind. So if you run line 13 of the code you can see that a new data object is appearing at the top right which is called data cbind and we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 14 of the code and then you can see that we have created a new data matrix and as you can see our first vector is shown in the first column of this matrix. You can also see that the row names of our data set are corresponding to the names in our vectors and you can see that the second vector vec2 is represented as second column in our data set. You can also see that the two values at the bottom two rows in our second vector are set to na and this is because our second vector was two elements shorter than the first vector. So in this first example I have explained how to c-bind two vectors with different length. However it's also possible to r-bind two vectors with different length and this is what I want to show you in the next example starting in line 16 of the code. And for this example we need to install and load the dplyr package. So I have installed the dplyr package already so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 17 of the code. And after running this line of code we can use the bind rows function which is provided by the dplyr package and within the bind rows function we need to specify the names of our two vector objects and then in this case I'm also converting the output of the bind rows function to a data frame object using the sdataframe function. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data frame object which is called data rbind. So if you run line 19 of the code you can see that a new data frame object appears at the top right of our studio which is called data rbind. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 20 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a new data set. And this data set contains six columns, whereby each of the names of our vector objects is now used as a column name of our new data frame. And you can also see that the values that were contained in the first vector are now shown in the first row of our data frame and the values of the second vector are shown in the second row of our data frame. And you can also see that the last two columns of our data frame were set to NA in the second row because our second vector was shorter than the first vector. So in this video I have explained how to c-bind and r-bind vectors with different length in the R programming language. 
However, in case you want to learn more on this topic, you could check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on the homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail and I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video. Furthermore, if you have liked the video, I would be very happy if you leave me some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notifications in future when I'm releasing new videos to the channel. That's it for this video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.